an interesting photograph hangs on the wall of the sanctuary of the Scottish Rite Masons in Washington, D.C. This photograph shows astronaut Neil Armstrong holding a Masonic apron over his spacesuit. The photograph has seemingly been taken on the moon, or at least on a studio set which resembles the surface of the moon. Neil Armstrong has become a mysterious character since his alleged moon expedition. According to the records of the Ohio Grand Lodge of Masons, Neil Armstrong's father is a Freemason. In fact, Neil Armstrong Sr. is a high-ranking 33rd degree Freemason. Neil Armstrong's co-pilot, the second man to have allegedly walked on the moon, was Buzz Aldrin. At the time of the Apollo 11 mission, Buzz Aldrin was a 32 degree Freemason. They were in good company, as many of NASA's astronauts were also Freemasons, including Gordon Cooper, Walter Shearer, John Glenn, Edgar Mitchell, Thomas Stafford, and Paul Weitz. These men were all members of the Brotherhood, all sworn to keep secrets on pain of death. These astronaut Masons were under the leadership of Kenneth Kleinnecht, who was NASA's Apollo space program manager. According to an article and photograph published in the Masonic magazine Scottish Rite Journal, Buzz Aldrin presented a flag to Sovereign Grand Commander Smith, who was the Supreme Commander of the Supreme Council of 33rd Degree Masons of the world. The flag Buzz Aldrin presented had been taken on Apollo 11. And then arm off. 13 is in. We copy you down, Eagle. Houston, uh, Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. Roger, Twin Tranquility. We copy you on the ground. You got a bunch of guys about to turn blue. We're breathing again. Thanks a lot. And we're getting a picture on the TV. Like Christopher Columbus and many explorers before them, Armstrong and Aldrin used a flag to claim territory for their monarch. Upon their return, NASA space program manager Kenneth Kleinecht invited the Apollo crew to a secret Masonic ceremony, which saw Kleinecht's brother be appointed to the sovereign grand commander and titular head of all Scottish Rite Masons throughout the world. Once you learn the occult significance of words such as Apollo, Columbia and Atlantis, you will realize that the occultically inspired murdering Nazis who developed NASA's space program have used names which are part of ritual, magic, and the occult. NASA spent gigantic sums of money during the 1960s, but most of it was spent on the ground, not in space. Huge American corporations many of which were manufacturing hardware for the military, made gigantic profits designing space vehicles and more importantly, life-sized models of spaceships and even huge stage sets resembling the lunar surface. Someone in NASA had realized that after taking billions of dollars from the American people, if they couldn't make it to the moon, they would fake it to the moon. Obviously, if you're going to somewhere that nobody has been before, you need to have a simulator which recreates that environment as closely as you can. If you're going to the moon, you recreate the surface of the moon. And here we see a section 
of the lunar surface created. It's about 30 foot high, 30 foot long, 35 foot long. Scale is given by the two people standing in front of it. There were plenty of simulation exercises, but the point is, and this is, should be taken into account in virtually everything that is discussed with the Apollo program, 400,000 people may have worked on the program in total, but none of them had a need to know more than his own job required. The people who were making the rockets didn't know what the people who were making the spacesuits were doing because they had no need to know about that. Their job was to make the best models and the best uh, simulation of the lunar surface that they could. And if we come up to this picture here, we see the three scales on which these models were built. We have here the whole moon as one unit. It stands about 20 foot high. We have here behind it a section of the surface of the moon. You'll notice it's curved. And here we have a more detailed section of the lunar surface. What you're saying is that the images which we're told show a camera pointing out the window of the lunar module as it's coming into land on the moon could well have been filmed previously using these large-scale models. That's right. It could well be that what we are looking at are films of realistic models. We have no means of knowing if they were actually taken on the lunar surface or whether what we're watching is part of the simulation exercise and the training exercise. And you'll notice here on these models there is a camera track. A camera starting at this end, coming down here, would approach the moon or appear to approach the moon and become ever closer towards it. It's exactly what you would expect to see if you were flying to the moon. This is a simulation rig that was built. Uh, this is the command and service module of the Apollo program. And you'll notice that the window here looks out onto a block here. And there's another one here. They're curved. These are the screens onto which the lunar surface was projected as the craft made a simulated approach towards the lunar surface. Is what we're seeing a mixture of fact and fiction? It is fact. It is fiction. It's mixed together. It's hard to separate them until you examine it closely. If a spacecraft is in deep space, the only possible explanation for a light seen through the window of the spacecraft is the sun. It's the only bright light in space. If it's not the sun, then it has to be some other artificial light, which implies that that particular image is possibly fiction. July 1961. NASA was soon being criticized for the flimsy construction of their hardware. The first orbital capsules did not even have windows in them for the astronauts to look out of. Could the footage which we see of the limb approaching the moon be filmed in a TV studio? It was filmed in a TV studio. There's absolutely no doubts whatsoever about that. And the way that this film was created was by the use of models. There's nothing secret about the models. They exist, you can go and see them today. The models were very lifelike, very realistic. There is one that is a life-size model. It's in Flagstaff in Arizona. It's two miles long, and it's an exact replica of the Sea of Tranquility. The photographs were used to create from those images the replica of the Sea of Tranquility, so that if it was flown over in a helicopter, it would appear as if it was a spacecraft approaching a similar area to land. So yes, all the scenes of the lunar surface were filmed on Earth. On the 25th anniversary of the event in 1994, 
Neil Armstrong made a rare public appearance and held back tears as he spoke these brief cryptic remarks before the next generation of taxpayers as they toured the White House. Today we have with us uh, a group of students among America's best. To you we say we've only completed a beginning. We leave you much that is undone. There are great ideas undiscovered, breakthroughs available to those who can remove one of truth's protective layers. He is that layer. <laughs>